In the first video, we discussed the concept of energy system integration and its role in providing system flexibility to integrate variable renewable energy sources, strengthen system resilience, and optimize system cost. In the second video, we explore the potential of hydrogen as a carbon neutral energy carrier, which due to its ability to integrate the electricity and gas system, will most likely play a key role in the future integrated energy system. In this last video, I will first discuss the barriers and tipping points for energy system integration and hydrogen. We will conclude with the current state of affairs in the hydrogen market and a future outlook for an integrated and renewable energy system. As addressed in the first video, interaction between different energy carriers is not new. Creating synergies between them to improve system resilience and lower system cost is. However, there are presently some barriers to energy system integration, which include First, IT infrastructure. When utilizing one energy carrier network to relieve the other, it is key to create a platform where an information can be shared. Creating a so-called smart grid by placing smart meters at different points in the energy system is necessary for different infrastructures, customers, and producers to interact. Presently, most assets in energy infrastructure are not yet smart, and it might differ per country, making it difficult to create interfaces across country lines. Second, not all regulatory policies are ready yet. In the Netherlands, for example, the double taxation for storage of electricity in batteries has only recently been removed. Also, the European Commission is still working on a policy to categorize hydrogen as a so-called regular energy carrier, allowing the existing grid operators to transport it through their networks. A third concern is the integration of market models. Originally separated, Cost of transmission and distribution infrastructure as a whole is presently not reflected in the business cases of energy producers. And lastly, creating a hydrogen economy could potentially be a real game changer in decarbonization of the energy system and system integration. But the hydrogen market is not yet established. Let's take a deeper look into what is holding the hydrogen economy back. There are several reasons why unleashing the potential of hydrogen is a bit more complicated. I will address the three most important ones. The first of these addresses the shortage of green electricity supply. In 2020, renewables made up about 30% of global electricity supply. Electrification of society and carbon emission reduction targets implies that green electrons are highly sought after by multiple sectors. With the present state of electrolyzer technologies, Converting electricity to hydrogen still entails a 30 to 40% loss of energy. Without large surpluses of renewable electricity, the direct use of electricity is still the most sensible option. Second, the price of green hydrogen is not yet competitive with the price of natural gas or electricity. As you can see from this figure, green hydrogen is presently six times more expensive than natural gas. Blue hydrogen is 2.5 times more expensive than natural gas. In order for hydrogen to become financially attractive for industrial or residential end use, prices have to become more competitive. Attaining economies of scale by increasing hydrogen production capacity and implementing a CO2 price are two drivers which can improve the competitive position of hydrogen. Lastly, hydrogen's potential is highly dependent upon infrastructure. For renewable electricity, infrastructure was already in place. Renewable plants could simply be connected to the existing electricity infrastructure. For hydrogen, demand is dependent on either new dedicated hydrogen pipelines or retrofitting of existing natural gas infrastructure. As a result, hydrogen's potential suffers from the classic chicken and egg story. To grid operators, it is of no interest to invest in infrastructure without demand. The question is, however, where the demand for hydrogen will develop without infrastructure in place. For this reason, many projects that we see today aim to connect the entire hydrogen value chain from production to end use, which will be addressed a bit later on. Due to the aforementioned hurdles the green hydrogen economy is yet to overcome, the energy sector has shown great interest in blue hydrogen. Blue hydrogen, unlike green, is not dependent on variable green electricity production, and is more price competitive with natural gas. Although blue hydrogen might not fit in a sustainable and circular energy system in 2050, it provides the potential to transition from a system based on traditional fossil fuels 
to renewable sources. Blue hydrogen can be used to overcome the problem of underutilized infrastructure by establishing security of supply and allowing industrial and residential customers to transition to hydrogen. For hydrogen to take off, it also needs an infrastructure. The existing natural gas infrastructure can be retrofitted to transport hydrogen. The European Hydrogen Backbone Project proposes to retrofit 75% of existing natural gas pipelines to create a European backbone to facilitate a European hydrogen market. Compared to building an entirely new hydrogen infrastructure, levelized cost of hydrogen transport is between 25 to 45% lower, depending on hydrogen market predictions. Despite the aforementioned hurdles hydrogen is yet to overcome, the future market outlook for hydrogen looks promising. The International Energy Agency comprised an overview of carbon neutral hydrogen projects worldwide. Presently, it lists over 400 different projects, totaling to 32 gigawatts, of which 170 small-scale projects are already operational. Most of the projects center around renewable hydrogen production. One interesting project is the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field in Japan. This project of 10 megawatts hydrogen production unit with storage is combined with a 20 megawatt solar power generation facility. This project is already operational. Another intended large-scale project is the Silver Frog project in Italy, where they intend to build a 10 gigawatt production unit connected to solar and wind electricity production plants. The hydrogen produced in this product is intended to be used by a local large industrial customer as feedstock for green steel production by 2030. Integrating and optimizing different energy carriers, sectors and actors within the system provides a fertile ground for new business models. Two examples of these are, first, providing IT assets and capabilities, and second, technology delivery. As mentioned before, energy system integration requires a strong IT platform, integrating different smart assets and optimizing energy flows within the system. Businesses which develop advanced artificial intelligence models, smart metering devices, or are able to create interfaces between different assets could tap into this market. In addition to IT infrastructure, technical infrastructure such as conversion and storage units need to be added to the energy system to allow for a system integration. Technology companies developing existing or potential new conversion and storage technologies could sell these to industrial or residential clients or provide conversion and storage services to grid operators. In this video, we have discussed the importance of establishing a strong IT infrastructure and creating the right incentives in market models and regulatory policies to facilitate energy system integration. In addition, creating a hydrogen economy can help further integrate the electricity and gas sector. However, the market for green hydrogen is still held back by renewable electricity supply levels, costs of green hydrogen production, and lack of infrastructure. In the meantime, blue hydrogen can be used to transition from a fossil fuel-based system to a renewable energy system, and with over 400 announced hydrogen projects worldwide, the future of hydrogen seems promising. Furthermore, the integration of different energy carriers and energy sectors provides a fertile ground for new business models. We have reached the end of this series of three videos on energy system integration and one of its main enablers, hydrogen. I would like to thank you for your attention.